Hello guys, good afternoon. Wow, that's a very nice crowd and even though everyone is busy, but just thank you, thank you so much to find the time to come here. So, this is the first time on stage I'm actually feeling nervous. Why? Because I'm usually talking about courses, I'm usually talking about teaching. So basically as an agency manager on training, I teach people how to dive and I believe as an agency, it's one of the two ways we protect the ocean. And the way we do it is to teach properly so we protect the place we teach. And now I'm going to adopt a very, very different topic which, to be honest, I'm not a pro in. So this is why, forgive me, and I'm bringing out certain ecological things that my, I try to be as accurate as I can, but I'm not a marine biologist. But I'm trying to show you what we, as an agency, SSI, is doing, is providing to, a tool to you to actually help in the conservation effort. Okay, so in a very simple way, let me introduce first what the SSI, so that everything will fall into place. So we are actually not just a dive agency. Nowadays, SSI, we view ourselves as an underwater sport agency more towards, which actually includes multiple disciplines. So just a very quick introduction. So we have the scuba diving part, which a lot of centers are already SSIs and they know they use the app so much. And the next one would be, of course, we are having Extended range, which is technical, like you see the previous talks, we have cave diving and something, it falls in the same field. So it provides modules and syllabus for training. And the third one would be free diving. And free diving basically allows people to dive without tanks. And in a part of free diving, we also will have mermaiding, which actually creates a very, very good image of Ocean Protectors Guardians, which is actually reaching out in a field we never thought before. We're reaching out to end users or divers in a way that you can become an image of ocean protection. So, and in Malaysia, we also have one of the biggest community worldwide of SSI swim centers and SSI lifeguard centers. which actually provides an entry point of safe diving, safe, safe understanding on water, and also in a way can instill a safe ocean and a blue ocean kind of approach to young, young kids. So bear with me, just introduce what is SSI about because it will make sense a little bit later on the tools we actually provide for how you can help the ocean. So, a very simple introduction in Malaysia, our team is actually covering Singapore, Malaysia and Brunei and we have a group of three, it's me and we have Pei Hua right there which is administrative and then we have Ricky which is the general manager. So we are a locally registered um, agency, we, are, we, have, um, we have our office in PJ which you can come over for anything, just have a talk and something. So if you have any thoughts after my talk about conservation, this is where you can find us. Just a very quick thing. But next. So this is our theme, as you can see, and we have been quite active. Follow the flags, you'll find exercise centers, then you, you can find us and share your ideas with us and also ask about courses. Okay, now just an introduction. The introduction is done. Now we go to the important topic. So, conservation. Why does SSI actually have this talk on the stage? It's because we believe as an agency, if we don't talk about conservation, we don't care about where we teach, and we don't care about how we protect the place we teach, it's our office. And the fact is we have a lot of tools to do it, and we are nothing without a blue ocean. So next. I would like to ask you guys in a very simple way. When it comes to conservation, when it comes to protect the ocean and things you do, what came to your mind? What kind of activities can you guys do? Any answers? You do beach cleanups? Okay. So you do beach cleanups for places that have trash. Besides, can you think of anything that you can do to protect the ocean? What have you been doing? Color blending. Okay. So, 
to do a beach cleanup, to do a coral planting, there's actually one key component that most people never realize took place. You need survey. You need to survey to know what action needs to be taken. Yes, of course. To understand the danger, to understand what is needed or not needed to be done. Jumping in, doing planting corals at the wrong part creates the wrong ecosystem, it creates the wrong cycle. So why it came to me and came to us that it can be a very powerful tool what we can provide. I've been, I've been saying about tools and never telling you what I, I'm feeling wrong now. Okay, what we can provide is this. Like you say, a beach cleanup is very important to clean up the trash and you have things like turtle conservation. To know where turtle lay eggs, to know where they are coming out, where they nest and how to protect it better, it takes surveys. It takes information. So what we are trying to provide now is an app. It's to provide an app to give information about reef survey. And it's very important, particularly this year, because for the past year, it's been reported that 60% of the reef has been bleached. Maybe even higher. We have a lot of reef surveys. Alvin is downstairs. You know, I think the coral is being in a pretty bad shape. If not in a bad shape, it's going to. If the water don't warm up, and this is one of the few things that you cannot change. You can only monitor. You can only monitor coral bleaching because of water temperature. You can't put water cooler in. So this is why the information that comes from you guys becomes more important. And now you guys can start contributing to this. And how does this happen? First and foremost, It would be to understand what SSI has in the app. So this video will show you very quickly the SSI app with all the functions they have in it in a very brief manner. Uh, can I play this? This is the SSI app that provides courses, dive logs, and also your certification. So as you can see, we are fully paperless now, so we no longer have physical materials. We have the option, but we strongly encourage against printing plastic cards for certification. All the training records are already online in the app, so all the centers have no reason to keep the, a piece of paper for 10 years until it rot because everything is uploaded in the server. And most importantly, we have a dive log that all divers can write the temperature, the details of a dive site, and it will be consolidated and presented in a way that is very useful for conservationists. So let me show you very, very simply. You can even, if you want to give it a try straight away, you can even download the app now, but I'll leave the chance to later. But basically, it's called My Dive Guide. Our, our database is called My Dive Guide, and imagine what it is. It is a little bit like it's a little bit like um, TripAdvisor, where you see details of hotels, but now you see it in the details of fishes. And the best part is you don't need to be SSI certified to use it. And you, for the centers, you don't need to be an SSI center to use it. It's free. It, this is why I'm standing here. It's not a marketing talk. It's a talk to promote a tool that is very helpful for conservation. So. It's a very simple thing. If you go, you can even go into my dive guide currently. Most of the sites in West Malaysia has been online. And you can start seeing the rated dives that we have. And what happens is if you, you check the dive site, 
go to the dive site locator, which is here. Doesn't show. Go to the dive site locator, and then you can actually see all the maps that's appearing. There are certain islands that we haven't put it up because uh, people name sites differently, and we need to consolidate a little bit more. But Perintian, Redang, Lang Tengah, Tioman, all the sites are already there. This is why I would also request help from, from you guys, from centers, to give me information of dive sites that I can put up. So it will go under a database. So what happened is, if you pick one of the dive sites, um, around Perintian Besar, we have, let's say, San Choi, right? You can see that there are about 1,828 dives. That's not a lot compared to the total dives that have been done there. But it needs people to start using it and start logging. So what it shows is now, if you go into a scan QR code, the dive site actually has a QR code. The app is QR code heavy. You scan a QR code of a dive site, and then all the log details will go and get consolidated into this database. So basically, you see the fishes, you see, you basically the eyes and ears for conservationists because they spend so much time to do surveys. But now all you see can be consolidated and been shown in a page. And it, so, it shows the percentage of sighting based on the total dive size and how many times people see it. And this is very important because you can, you can make a comparison between years, between something that how many fishes have been seen per dive. Maybe per five dive you see one, you see one turtle, but now you take 20 dives to see one. Then you know the number is definitely down. So, and then it shows the temperature and it shows the visibility of the dive. So this is very important in some ways because visibility tells you about sentiment. It tell, and temperature tells you about, well, temperature because corals rely on a cooler temperature to actually be in their natural habitat. So all this comes from diver details. And imagine, this is only 2,000 dives. Imagine we have some dive site that in Thailand has 20,000. It's basically a doctoral level database that you can use for research. So... Your log can make a difference. And quick question, how many of you still log a dive? Be honest. So for the ones that never raise your hand, if I give you a value now that you can log your dive for something, would you do it? It's, it's, a, it's a quick question and it's, um, it's a very direct question. People are logging dive for, for their own record and they think they are logging dive because... And then they stop logging dive is because they know it doesn't go anywhere. But now, I'm telling you it goes somewhere. It's a chance. It's a chance for you to do and make a difference. So this is what I'm trying to convey here. So, to do it in a very simple way, let me show you how this works, and then you'll be, you'll be quite shocked that the, the app is quite extensive. So this is, a dive, this is how to download the app. You can do it, you can do it later, you can talk to me at the booth. And the next, you basically need to find a center to affiliate to. So, in this case, you can affiliate to even us, uh, the service center, for the time being before you found the next center. And you c after you see select dive site, you can choose one, or, sorry, select centers, you can choose one of the center that is close to you. It links you to center, but if you don't, come talk to me. We'll tell you where you can affiliate to. Just choose one, the center will be more than happy to let you park under them. But you don't need to be doing any courses to be under them. That's no issue at all. So, after you go in, you can add dive. Or you can just go to the logbook button up there. And then this is the page that you just insert all information. So the main thing that you need to put in, your dive numbers is basically how many dives you have done. And the dive site is where you select the dive sites. And this is very important because this you only when you select the right dive size, all the data will actually go there. So dive size, there's two ways. One is to search it on the map. Like this is Perintian Vietnamese rack. Or another way is to open up the Vietnamese rack QR code and then just scan it. So what I'm going to do very, very soon for island centers is I'm going to print out the QR codes for the dive size and I'm going to pass it to you guys for the centers. And then you just scan, just scan. you don't need to look for the map. Through, through a pain. Sometimes you don't have strong internet as well. Map loads slower than scanning QR codes. So if you select the dive sites, 
basically, then it will show you the details of what type of dive you do. You can even add it in. And you can add the fishes in. And this part is key. Currently, we are not putting too much species in because we want to consolidate. And if you have too much, that's also an increased chance of uh, mistakes. And once you put the, um, um, the animals in, and the next one, you can even add your body. Every SSI diver, once download the app, have a QR code. You just add it in. But this is um, not directly contribute to the database, just saying. And then, why the database can be more accurate than most things that is written manually is because it requires the center to scan the QR code. So the center won't really let you scan their QR code if the information is wrong. For instance, the dive is 20 meters, you write 200, they see it, it's, a, it's danger, right? So this actually filters out wrong information. So the dive site's data are relatively accurate, but this is why we need more people to start using it. Because when more people start to use it, the data would be a little bit more um, extensive so that the wrong ones get filtered out very quickly. And the mean is actually quite stable. So this is why you do it. So now, for if you are a dive pro, you can use your own pro QR code. It will recognize and then you can certify your own dive. Because this is what pro do. So now the question would be, now if you are center owners, now your next question would be, what if you are not an SSI center? And I told you from the start, this is not uh, trying to market this. So a non-SSI center or even NGOs can actually sign up as what we call. So this is the, the verification code that um, a center will get. So for, for SSI, non-SSI centers and NGOs, you can actually sign up what you call a MyDiveGuide partner. It basically just needs your center details and something to verify that you are a legal body. But then you can start offering it. Imagine you are a non-SSI center, you can even offer to verify SSI divers dive through an SSI app. So I believe this is how an, us as an agency should go forward. It should be very inclusive and it should be very generous towards conservation. So this is why I say the tools are there. The details are already open. The data is already open for the, for the public to use. So we just need more people to start using it. And the way to offer this is free. It's cost free. You just need to sign up as a MyDiveGuy partner. And you get a QR code to verify dives. You can even help us at providing dive site details. It will take a lot of uh, workload of me. Because I'm the one adding all the dive sites and you guys know the dive site better than me. Because I've been diving Perantian, let's say, 20 times a year. You guys have been di diving it 20 times a week. So this is why we need information from this. And you can contribute to the dive site database by offering your divers, even non-SSI divers, you as a non-SSI center, to just sign up. It's, it's, just, it's just free to use. But if you want, as an NGO or non-SSI center, you want to offer some other things to your volunteers, to offer them some courses without really um, running courses day in, day out. We have a lot of ecological courses. And the fact is, you can even sign up as an SSI center. Okay, this is the only sales speech I'm going to say today. So you can even sign up as an SSI center because for SSI centers, we have snorkeling courses, we have um, scuba trial courses that is free to certify. It means that you don't pay a single cent to us to give this cert to the diver. So it means that for NGOs and for, for some governmental or school clubs, as long as you have a dive master, you cross over to become an SSI pro, you can start offering this and you don't pay a single cent. And these courses are the one that links the most to conservation. You teach people how to survey by snorkeling, not all the times diving. And these people can eventually become divers and start spreading the same knowledge on how, how to dive correctly. We have dive centers that, uh, we have NGOs that eventually become dive centers and start training students themselves. But this is just an afterthought. Most important thing is, my dive center is free, but there's an option to also sign up as an SSI center. And we give, we can, we can look at the, um, 
the so-called registration fee and something, if you are an NGO or something, we, we, we can give a very, very good offer. So this is what you can give to a diver when you have a snorkel instructor. You can integrate this into your volunteerism work. Offer that as a module, so also it's easier for, uh, for grants and everything, for applications. Okay, so enough of the app. That's a lot of tryouts. I usually teach people straight away, but now it's a little bit difficult. I'm thinking to share the screen, but it's also very difficult. So that's why I screenshot everything. Do anyone have questions? Or do anyone have any information? Or do anyone even can bring doubts on how the database can, is not contributing or what is the limitations of it? Feel free to let me know now. Because it's also important for me to know as we can improve that, or I can, I can actually um, give the right information if it's a misunderstanding. Anyone have any questions here? It's very quiet. Okay, if that's the case... No, okay. You can even try it out. Like I say, you can scan the QR code and you can actually try to download the app. It's, it's free for use and then you can start seeing it. So, if you have any, any questions at all, we, our booth is all the way to the end and you can speak to any of the SSI centers. They are offering the same thing. If you are a center owner or if you are a non-governmental um, uh, organization, you can come to talk to us and see how this is applicable to you as well. I'm open to any of the, I'm open to any of the ideas because it have been too long that agencies are not directly involved in conservation. I think this is a tangible way to do it because everything is in open. The database in its current form is already usable in many ways. So if there's any improvement, that's for the future. But I hope we can open up a conversation. Then you can come to us and we are, we are very, well, we are very open-minded in what we can do. Okay, so in the end, this actually falls under our Blue Ocean Initiative. It's basically our conservation initiative. And we hope to bring more of this. The database is only one. We hope to bring more talks and conversations with the market. This is why we might even run seminars inviting NGOs to meet our centers. And then you can share what you do. And they have, an, they have a better idea on what they can do to collaborate. Okay, so this is our effort, again, to go back into the local scene to support the local as a local registered agency. So help us, give us feedbacks. This will be more, more valuable than anything else. And let's actually start giving us back a blue ocean. Okay, so yeah, they're ready to clap hands already. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let me see, huh? Any clips? Okay. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. I hope you guys can spread the news. Let people start using it. Thank you very much.